Hi there, everyone. This is Dick Enroth reporting the first game of the Professional Basketball World Series between the Syracuse Nationals, champions of the Eastern Division of the National Basketball Association, and the Minneapolis Lakers, kings of the Western Division of the NBA. This is basketball at its greatest, as played by the top players in the history of the cage sport. Tonight, we're at the Minneapolis Auditorium for the first game of the Basketball World Series. Here are the Lakers, the perennial champions of basketball, warming up before the start of the game. Here is the tip-off, George Mikan jumping against rookie Jim Neal. The Nationals opened with Neal at the pivot, Wally Ostercorn from Illinois, and Paul Seymour from Toledo at the forwards, Bill Kenville from St. Bonaventure, and George King and Morris Harvey at the guards. The Lakers start with Mikan at the pivot, Jim Pollard of Stanford, and Vern Mickelson of Hamlin on the front line, Slater Martin from Texas, and Whitey Scoot from Minnesota in the backcourt. The Nationals draw first blood as George King follows up his own shot with an easy layup. Well, the Lakers come right back with big Vern Mickelson being pushed by Wally Ostercorn while in the act of shooting. Mick hit on both free throws, and the game is tied 2-2. Two to two. Al Serby, the fiery coach of Syracuse, has his injury-riddled ball players keyed up for this all-important money series. Close to $2,000 per man rides in the outcome of this best four out of seven game. Let's watch Bill Kenville, wearing number 15, drive in for a shot. The whistle blows, and there's a foul called on Mickelson of the Lakers. Kenville got a free throw, but missed. The Nationals intercepted a Laker pass, and they stormed back down the court. Now let's watch as they move the ball around until Big Jim Neal gets position on Mikan. Captain Paul Seymour lobs a pass over the head of Laker Whitey Scoop to Neal, who swings his right to the basket. Syracuse leads 4-2. Neal, a surprise starter in the series, misses the free throw. The ball is picked up by Whitey Scoob from Brainerd, Minnesota. Whitey dribbles down the length of the court before passing to Mickelson, the six-foot-seven-inch star from Hamlin University, fakes an overhead shot and passes back to Scoob. Notice how the champions move the ball around. And even the George Mikan, the great, misses in this tough league. Four Nationals are in position to rebound, but Neal came down with the ball. Now it's the Nats' turn to set up a play. Syracuse finished third in the Eastern Division of the NBA behind New York and Boston. The Nats have had little trouble in the playoffs, whipping New York two straight games and beating Red Box Boston Celtics three straight. Here's Neal loose again, and it's another Syracuse basket. The Nationals lead 6-2. Down by four points, Minnesota's uh, Whitey Skoog, playing for Minneapolis, comes right back. Skoog hits on a one-hander. George King, number three, takes the ball out of bounds. The ex-college scoring champion for Morris Harvey passes to his running mate, Paul Seymour, number five. And the Nats move the ball into the front court. Notice how the Syracuse team is banged up, if you will. The Nats came down the stretch, taking game after game, but suffering bump after bump. It seems almost impossible for some of the Nats to play basketball, but play they did, forcing the fabulous Lakers, the greatest basketball team of all time, to the limit of their ability. Watch the Lakers on court one of their favorite plays this time. Slater Martin, the smallest man in pro basketball, at 5'10", picks up a perfect pass from Mikan. And at the Minneapolis basket. This year, as always, the National Basketball Association is divided into two divisions. The Eastern Division is composed of Syracuse here, New York Knickerbockers, Boston Celtics, Philadelphia Warriors, and Baltimore Bullets. The Western Division is made up of the famed Lakers, Rochester Royals, Fort Wayne Pistons, and Milwaukee Hawks. The fabulous Lakers, whom you're watching right now, have been compared to the greatest sports teams of all time, such as the Yankees and Canute Rockney's terrific Notre Dame football machines of the 20s. When Laker president Ben Berger and company went into the basketball business, all they received in return for their cash investment were 15 dirty and worn-out uniforms from the defunct Detroit Gems of the National Basketball League. The first big name signed by the Minneapolis group was Jimmy Pollard, the flash of the amateur league playing for the Oakland Vintners. After Pollard came two homegrown products, Don Carlson and Tony Jarris. Jack DeWan was picked up from Loyola University of Chicago. But the biggest break of all came when the All-American Basketball League blew up. George Mikan was drafted by the Lakers. Mikan, the highest paid player in basketball, immediately became the greatest drawing card in the history of the game. Laker coach Johnny Kundla, himself an all-conference player in his collegiate days in Minnesota, built his attack around the great Mikan. It was Mikan, the money player, who played with a broken arm in the World Series of 1949 against the Washington Capitals. And it was Mikan who became the greatest scoring machine in the history of the pro game. The league tried its best to halt Mikan and Minneapolis, installing the 12-foot wide lane instead of the usual 6-foot lane. This move was directed at George Mikan. 
It probably is the first time any league has discriminated against a player. The 12-foot lane slowed Mike and down a bit, but Coach Kendla, being a master at basketball, built a fast-moving, quick-shooting machine that wasn't to be halted. Other changes in the pro game is limiting the offensive team to 24 seconds of possession with the basketball. If that offensive team does not try a shot in that space of time, it loses possession of the ball. The much-discussed zone defense has been outlawed by the pros. The zone defense, used mostly by Hank Iba at Oklahoma A&M and Ozzie Cowles of Minnesota, has been the object of many an attack. The pros believe that the paying customer would rather see a fast-moving, high-scoring game than a defensive battle between possession teams. Thus, the NBA outlawed the zone defense. Six fouls are allowed per man in the NBA. Twelve-minute quarters are played in league games with overtime periods, if needed, being five minutes long. During the last two minutes of a regulation time, there shall be a jump ball after every successful free throw, or in the case of two free throws, after the second free throw is made. League President Morris Pogoloff was recently elected to a new long-term contract. Only the best of the college graduates makes the National Basketball Association. The NBA is tough to break into, and it's a truly great player who makes the grade. Of the more than 15 million men and boys playing the game in the United States, only 90 move into the pay-for-play game. Take the Lakers, for example. On this team you're watching right now, only Clyde Lavelle, the All-American of Kansas University, has made the jump into the pro game. And Lavelle is the second string center. The champs have gone along with their front line of George Mikan, Vern Nicholson, and Jim Pollard for the last four years. The Lakers' three guards, Slater Martin, Tepsall, and Whitey Skoog, have been around for three or more years. With the player limit being 10 men per club, perhaps you see how hard it is for a rookie to break into the NBA. The Nats used a pressing defense, resulting in many a bad pass for the Lakers. Here, the Eastern Division champs score on Bill Kendall's long shot is 10 to 6 Syracuse. Whitey Skoog sparked the Lakers in the first half by shooting on six, and it's 10 to 8 Syracuse. Jim Neal comes right back for the Nats, hitting another beauty, and the Syracuse Club leads 12 8. Just about time we hear from Mr. Basketball, George Mikan. Watch Big George tip in Vern Mickelson's shot, and the Lakers pull up within a two point deficit. Bob LeBoy, the ex Western Kentucky star, hits in a one hander, and Syracuse leads by four points. Here's a beauty, Paul Seymour, number five, takes two out of position for a spinning layup. Plenty of English in that ball, huh? Scoog playing his greatest game of his professional career keeps the champs in the game with his deadly shooting. Nice going, Whitey. Had eyes on it. Now the Lakers start to roll. Watch Vern Mickelson score on his favorite shot. You see him right side of the key there. Number eight, Ostercorn guarding him. But without any particular proof. Well, the boy, as hot as a pistol, hits another one-hander for Syracuse as the two teams played basket. Here's one of the greatest plays in basketball. George Mikan forces his way through the center, spins and shoots, and is fouled by Paul Seymour. Notice Mikan's form as the ex-All-American from DePaul dips, slips, and it goes through the hoop. Here's Bill Kendall again. This time, he's got position on Dick Snicker and lays it up for an easy bucket. Kendall was fouled by Snicker in the act of shooting, and it's good. Clyde Lavelle, the all-time great from Kansas University, is in the lineup now for Minneapolis. Here is Lavelle scoring on a follow-up shot. Here's a fast break performed as it should be. Scoop steals the ball, passes to Mike and to Scoop to Snicker, and it's a field goal. It's the boy again. He's found his favorite spot. There he is, number 16. Bingo, it's another Syracuse hoop. Lakers ball, Martin passes to Lavelle, and it's the automatic basket as Clyde wheels around for a two-pointer. Here's a coaching nightmare, trying to figure a defense for a double pivot made up of Mikan, 6'10", and 240 pounds, and Lavella, 6'9", 235 pounds. Mikan misses, but Lavella follows it up. The Bulls are more famous for their offensive exploits, but they play it rough and tough on defense. Here you see the Syracuse team in position with the basketball, looking for that one good shot. Take a look at the Laker defense. It seems impregnable. Johnny Kundla, the Laker coach, takes pride in the fact that the Lakers are the least scored upon team in the pro game. Notice how the men in white from Minneapolis literally dog the Syracuse Nationals to have that ball, permitting no opening. Earl Lloyd is in there now for Syracuse, broken hand and all. Lloyd smashed his paw on that tough Boston series. Lloyd's going to fake over his head, get LaBella out of position for a split second, then drive around toward the basket. The shot is no good, and Jim Pollard from Oakland, California, rebounds for the Lakers. 
Scoot has it now. Pass to Pollard coming up. We'll pass to Mikan. But watch Bob LeBoy intercept. There he is. Bob starts up the court once again. The cat like Scoot steals the ball for the Lakers. Now the champs turn this thrilling sequence into a basket as George Mikan gets the perfect pass from Scoot for a two pointer. The Lakers lead 31 to 28. Seymour and Kendall work the ball up the court for Syracuse. There's a pass to LeBoy. Bob tries to pass to Wally Ostercorn, but the ball is knocked out of his hand. Over to Earl Lloyd, who jumps and scores in the 31-30 Minneapolis. The Nats hit on a free throw while the Lakers made good on three charity tosses to lead at the end of the first half, 34 to 31. There's the first half of tonight's game of the week in the National Basketball Association. The score is Minneapolis 34, Syracuse 31.
Here's the tip-off for the fourth and final quarter of this all-important World Series game between Minneapolis and Syracuse. Jim Neal for the Nats against Clyde Lavella to the Lakers. The Nats get the tip and move the ball up in the front court. Notice how carefully the pros move that ball, not forcing it. Their play is deliberate, but not controlled ball. The pay-for-play boys are masters at basketball, and they really make it look very easy at times. Ball handling by the lights of the Lakers and Syracuse is a work of art. Finally, Al Messino's try at a long shot is short. Lavella grabs the ball. Lakers are off to the races. Whoops, slide. Stay on your feet and get a draw. Well, that's uh, Slater Martin working the ball down the floor. Jim Holstein's in the far left-hand corner. Passes off to Lavellet. He shoots and misses. The Nats rebound and move the ball up the floor. There's plenty of tension now as both clubs sense the importance of every shot. Bill Kenbold is loose again. Number 15 watches he gets the ball, takes aim, shoots, and scores. Getting ready to set him up. There he is. The Nats narrow the gap, 56 to 52. The Syracuse once again. This time, Earl Lloyd passes to Bob LaVoy, who hits a one-hander, and the Nats pull up within the margin of a field goal. The score, 56 to 54. The pressure is great as the Lakers move the ball up the floor. Scoob gets position, feeds Mike in on a beautiful pass, but you're going to see in a moment. Then watch George wheel around and score for the Minneapolis team. There he is. 58-54. With the clock ticking away valuable time, Syracuse trailing by four points has possession of the ball. The Mats are looking for a three-point play, but the Laker defense is too tough once again. Paul Seymour, number five, draws a bead on the basket. His long shot is going to hit the edge of the rim. Watch Mike and get the rebound. Big 99. Ball's knocked out of his hands for Earl Lloyd. It goes in the air, shoots, but it's no good. Finally, it's knocked out of bounds, and there's a jump ball coming up in front of the Syracuse basket involving Al Messino and Slater Martin. Watch how the Lakers get the tap. Martin's pass goes over the fingertips of George Mikan in the play, which is coming up in just a moment. Even Big George at 6'10 can't get every pass. See that? The Mats now have possession of the ball. Pressure is great as Syracuse rushes the ball down the floor. The men of Serbia want to win this game and get the jump in the Basketball World Series. Notice how they move that basketball. Yes, sir, this is basketball at its very best. Finally, Paul Seymour gets loose. The flash from Toledo takes a hook shot. It rolls off no good. Mike is there with the rebound. The world champions move the ball into the offensive zone. The Lakers holding a slight lead. Now are content to pull down to the ball, protecting that advantage. The Kendler strategy is to feed the pivot for that easy basket. Martin spots his man, lays an easy pass to Mikan, whose shot rolls the rim. Bob LaVoy grabs off another rebound in Syracuse, moves up into the offensive end of the floor. The Nats, famous for their fast break, have slowed down their play because of injuries. Chino shoots, and it's no good. Jim Holstein rebounds for the Lakers. He puts the ball off to Pollard. Jim moves the ball up in the front court. Pollard trying for a solo flight is tied up on route to the hoop, and it's a jump ball. Hey, wait a minute. There seems to be something wrong. Referees Charlie Ekman and Joe Serafin talking over the situation. Get it straight now, and there's a jump ball. Ball's tipped to Mike and Big George passes to Holstein, who takes a rest right there in the heat of battle. Jimmy gets back on his feet with the aid of the referee, and play continues. Holstein passes the ball to Slater Martin. Martin, the spark plug guard, calls for a play. The champs are after their sixth world championship in seven tries. There's Whitey Scoot with the ball. Passes to Mikan, who misses the shot, but there's a foul call on the play. The score favors the Lakers 58 to 54. Mr. Basketball, George Mikan has a free throw. Gift shot is good. The champs lead 59 to 54. George King passed the ball into Al Messino. Over to Kenbo. Syracuse wasn't supposed to go anywhere in the championship race this season. Here they are fighting the mighty Lakers for the world's title. Coach Al Survey has performed the coaching job of the year in basketball. The Nats are a team without any great star. Sure, they have Dolph Shays and Paul Seymour, but on paper, their squad doesn't measure up with the star-studded Boston Celtics of the New York Knickerbockers, for example. Here is Bill Kenbo, the star for St. Bonaventure, looking for that good shot and makes it. No, it doesn't. It rolls off. The great Pollard grabs off the rebound. The champs move down court. Slater Martin, the smallest man in the game, has the ball. Minneapolis still leads by five points. 
Holstein tries to cut across the lane. There's a pileup on the court. Big Jim Neal of the Nats and George Mikan of the Lakers. There's a lot of weight. The two Giants jump in front of the Laker basket. Notice the comparative size of referee Ekman. Looks sort of like a midget. Mikan will tap the ball to Pollard behind Neal. What's at the street? Why do you shoot? It's good, but the basket doesn't count. Pollard was fouled by Lloyd before the shot. Pollard's at the line for one. Very effortlessly, he makes the free throw good. Syracuse puts the ball in play with number four, Dolph Shays, wearing a cast in his left arm, taking the ball out of bounds. Shays broke his wrist playing against Boston in the Eastern Division playoff. There's George King hitting on a jump shot. Lakers ball out of bounds. The Sands have tried the ballot in the lineup now as they're resting Mikan. Watch Minneapolis work that ball around. Now the ballot swings like a windmill and hits for the ten. Minneapolis has the ball again. Now watch that rebounding strength we told you about earlier in the game. The ballot will miss on the jump shot. Pollard is there for the tap, which is not good. Finally, Mickelson, the third man, grabs the ball and it's a field goal for Minneapolis. Playing volleyball, in other words. The Lakers lead 71 to 58. Syracuse has the ball again, trailing, and with the clock done, the Nats need every point they can muster. Wally Ostercorn, the lad from Illinois, is going to hit on a jump shot and does, and it's 71 to 60. With three minutes and two seconds left, the Nats start to pick up the Lakers defensively all over the court. Minneapolis moves the ball around, finally getting Pollard loose for just a split second. But Jim will lose the ball en route to the basket. The Lakers pick up the loose ball. There's the lead pass to Frank Pepstall of Seton Hall, who hits on the driving layup. 73 to 60, Minneapolis. After taking the ball out of bounds, there's a tie-up in front of the Syracuse basket. For Seymour, Green, and hits from 25 feet out. The Nationals aren't dead yet. Another jump ball, this time in front of the Lakers basket. Martin for Minneapolis, game for Syracuse. The tap goes to the Lakers. Minneapolis is looking for that insurance. You never tell what will happen in basketball. Dick Stecker is loose for a shot. And another two-pointer. Seymour takes the ball all the way down the court. Ball passes off to bullet Billy Gaber from University of Syracuse. Billy hits on a long shot. It's the Nats again. Watch it now as they gain possession. LeBoy passes off to Ostercorn. Blocks and Wally's loose for an easy basket. With seconds remaining on the clock, the Lakers go into a stall. The Nats have to come out of their defense in order to try to get the ball. But the Minneapolis team moves the ball around so expertly that there's little chance for the Nats to intercept. Finally, Minneapolis gets a two-pointer as Slater Martin breaks loose for the hoop. And it's a field goal. There he is, wide open. Al Messino moves the ball into the front court, passes off to Bob LaVoy, who spins one up there, but it's no good. George King shoots as the gun goes off, and the game is over. The Lakers are victorious in the first bill of the Basketball World Series, winning 79 to 68. Here are the totals for Syracuse, Bill Kendall, 8 points, Wally Ostercorn, 11, Bob LaVoy, 15, Jim Neal, 8, Earl Lloyd, 3, Paul Seymour Talley, 13 points, George King, 6, and Billy Gaber, 4. For the Lakers, Clyde LaVellard with high point man with 16, George Mikan with 15, Slater Martin with 13, Whitey Scoop scored 11, Vern Mickelson tallied 9, Jim Pollard, Jim Holstein, and Dick Schnitzer 4 points each, and Frank Pepsall 3 points. And that's tonight's game of the week between the Minneapolis Lakers and the Syracuse Nationals. Next week, we'll be coming your way from the Baltimore Sports Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, when the Baltimore Bullets play the Milwaukee Hawks. Until then, this is Dick Anroth reporting and hoping you enjoyed tonight's presentation. <laughs>